Melvin faces charges of first-degree murder and attempted murder in the six-year-old case of shooting victim Terry Marriott Jr. The charges follow years of investigating by police and violent feuds between the Melvin and Marriott crime families. Hey guys, in today's video we'll be talking about the rivalry between two crime families in Nova Scotia that led to a decade of firebombings, shootings, and kidnappings all starting in the small town of Spryfield and eventually extending into the wider Halifax region. The two families involved in the feud were the Melvins and the Marriotts. The two families worked together in the early 2000s but soon turned into bitter rivals, giving way to a cycle of violence that turned Spryfield into a battleground. The direct feud between the families started with a generation of younger gangsters. However, the families adopted a criminal lifestyle much earlier, starting with their respective patriarchs, Terry Marriott Sr. and Jimmy Melvin Sr. We'll briefly take a look at each family and their history before they ended up clashing against each other. Terry Marriott Sr.'s criminal history began in 1966 at the age of 17 years old. He was running drug operations along with his brothers, Ricky Marriott and Billy Marriott. Billy Marriott was also connected with the Hells Angels after becoming friends with a full patch member named Neil Smith while they were in jail together. Terry Marriott Sr. was no stranger to prison as he was always going in and out, but in 1988 it got more serious. He was charged in the drug related murder of a man named Arnold Joseph Bailey. The primary witness in the case claimed that he was with Terry Marriott Sr. at the time and saw him shoot the victim in the back of the head. However, the witness testimony was compromised when it was found out that the witness himself had committed a murder even after cutting a deal with the police. The testimony was rejected in court and Terry Marriott Sr. was acquitted. Terry Marriott Sr. continued his drug operations in the 90s alongside his brothers and by the mid 90s his son Terry Marriott Jr. had also joined the drug trade. On the other side of the spectrum was Jimmy Melvin Sr., who became a significant figure in the Nova Scotia drug trade in the 1990s through his connections with the Hells Angels Halifax chapter. He was convicted in three major drug busts during the 90s. One of them involved the importation of 26 tons of hash worth roughly $500 million. Melvin Sr. was charged with conspiracy to smuggle hashish, and in 1994, he was sentenced to eight years in prison. While on parole in 2001, Jimmy Melvin Sr. was arrested once again in a drug bust against the Hells Angels. He was found guilty of selling hash and was handed another six year sentence, keeping him in prison until at least 2006. As for the Marriott crime family, both Terry Marriott Sr. and Terry Marriott Jr. were arrested in 1999 in Operation Crackpot that targeted crack houses and street level drug dealing. Terry Marriott Sr. was sentenced to four years for trafficking, while his son got four and a half years for possession. At one point, the National Parole Board had ordered Terry Jr. to stay away from his father because of his lengthy criminal history. During the 90s, the Hells Angels were controlling a major chunk of Nova Scotia's drug trade and were gaining infamy throughout Canada. As a response, Canadian law enforcement agencies cracked down on the biker gang towards the late 90s and early 2000s. In 2001, Halifax police started Operation Hammer to dismantle the Halifax Hells Angels chapter. The Angels clubhouse was permanently closed and their presence was greatly reduced. With both Jimmy Melvin Sr. and Terry Marriott Sr. in jail and Hells Angels disjointed, there was a power vacuum on the street. The younger members of both families took charge of the drug operations and soon joined hands to run projects more smoothly. In May 2002, the youngest Marriott brother, BJ Marriott, was arrested and convicted on murder charges and Jimmy Melvin Jr. was already imprisoned on cocaine smuggling charges at the same time. Inside prison, BJ Marriott and Jimmy Melvin Jr. started a large-scale drug operation that would become the first major collaboration between the younger generations of the Marriott's and Melvin's. The Melvin's and the Marriott's were running crack houses together and smuggling crack, hash, and pills into prison to sell to other inmates. The authorities caught up to the alliance when an associate running one of the crack houses turned into an informant. A combination of wiretaps, bugs, and police-sponsored drug deals uncovered a narcotics ring with BJ Marriott, Gary Boo Boudreau, and Jimmy Melvin Jr. as the ring leaders. In July 2002, the authorities conducted Operation Midway, resulting in 80 arrests including the mothers of BJ Marriott and Jimmy Melvin Jr. Melvin Jr. got an extended 5-year prison term, while BJ Marriott was sentenced to 16 years in prison. As the police scrutiny increased, the drug operation started collapsing along with the profits. This led to a stress in the relationship between the two crime families who had been cooperating up to this point. While the confirmed reason of how the feud started remains unknown, it is alleged to have started after BJ Marriott told Melvin Jr. that his father Melvin Sr. was a rat. Being called a rat was seen as the highest level of insult in the Halifax area, and Jimmy Melvin Jr. allegedly never forgave BJ Marriott for that. 
The scenes of the rivalry spilled out of prison where younger Marriott started getting into feuds. On October 25th, 2002, a property owned by Jimmy Melvin Sr. was attacked by Wayne Douglas Robinson, who was an extended family member of the Marriott's. The attacks dubbed as the Spyfield Wars were a constant headline in Nova Scotia and both Melvin and Marriott family members became household names in Halifax. The turf war came to a head in 2006 when both Jimmy Melvin Sr. and Jimmy Melvin Jr. were released from prison. In June of that year, 21-year-old Wayne Marriott was killed in a drive-by shooting as he sat in a parked car near his home in Beachville. Wayne Marriott was a convicted drug trafficker and the first cousin of BJ Marriott and Terry Marriott Jr. Shortly after Marriott's homicide in Beachville, Jimmy Melvin Jr. became a person of interest to the police. A public appeal was put out to help the police find Jimmy Melvin Jr. However, he wasn't named as a suspect. A few days later, one of Jimmy Melvin Sr.'s properties were firebombed in retaliation. Following the firebombing, BJ Marriott's family home was targeted with gunshots. Luckily, there were no casualties. Melvin Jr. was now a wanted man by both the authorities and the Marriott's for the killing of Wayne Marriott and the subsequent attack on the Marriott family home. Halifax police were looking for him for breaking a court-imposed curfew when he was picked up by Digby police after a bar fight. Jimmy Melvin Jr. presented a fake ID and offered to help law enforcement in their search for Jimmy Melvin Jr. and stayed with the police for a whole six hours. After this major embarrassment to the police, he was finally arrested nine days later. While the older Melvin brother was in prison, the firebombings continued and this time his younger brother Corey Melvin was charged and pleaded guilty to the crimes. Jimmy was never charged with Wayne Marriott's murder, however he spent close to two years in prison awaiting trial for a home invasion. He walked free when two of the witnesses backed out of their statements and was released from prison on November 14, 2008. The coming weeks saw a spike in violence and just three days later, Jimmy Melvin Sr. was targeted outside of a pizzeria. He survived with wounds as he jumped to avoid gunfire. At the crime scene, Jimmy Melvin Jr. uttered a famous line to the reporters trying to interview him, saying, there is no wrath in the Melvin family. And as he got into his car, he yelled, death before dishonor. The shootings continued and the very next day, Melvin Jr.'s best friend, Jason Hallett, was the target of a failed assassination attempt outside of a children's hospital. It was the third attempt on his life that year. Weeks later, on December 4th, Jimmy Melvin Jr. himself was hit by bullets in Halifax's Cowie Hill neighborhood. A man named Jeremy LeBlanc was charged with the shootings of Hallett and Jimmy a few days later. LeBlanc was a one-time friend of Jimmy and was involved in the drug trade when the Melvin and Marriott families worked together. However, after the Marriott's and the Melvin started their feud, he sided with the Marriott's. LeBlanc was in the same car with Wayne Marriott when he was killed in 2006. The police laid the charges after listening to wiretaps in which Jeremy LeBlanc and another man were heard plotting the attacks. LeBlanc is currently serving a 26-year prison term for his crimes. It was later revealed that the trigger man in Hallett's shooting was 18-year-old Marriott family member Aaron Marriott. He pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. The shooting spree between the families continued into 2009. In February 2009, Terry Marriott Jr. was murdered in his sleep after a night of partying at a friend's house. Even though there were five people in the house at the time, no one came forward with any knowledge on the attack. Terry Marriott Jr. had been recently released from prison and suffered a beating at a strip bar hours before his murder. He was highly intoxicated at the time as cocaine, alcohol, ecstasy, and Valium were found in his blood. It was claimed that Terry Marriott Jr. was trying to leave behind his violent life, but his murder extended the violent beef even further. Terry Marriott Sr. was arrested two months after his son's death as the police raided his home in Spryfield and found 28 grams of cocaine. He was charged with possession for the purpose of trafficking. During Terry Sr.'s trial, his lawyer told the court that his client had not been involved in any drug-related offenses since 1998 and only came back to get information about his son's murder. Terry Sr. hoped that the people he dealt drugs with might give him some clues about Junior's death. His lawyer asked the judge to place Terry Marriott Sr. on house arrest, but the judge told the defendants that a prison sentence was more appropriate. Terry Marriott Sr. was sent to prison for two years. With so many of his rivals off the street, and after surviving so many murder attempts, Jimmy Melvin Jr. became bold and started his own website where he proudly presented his run-ins with the law. Melvin Jr. posted newspaper articles and news stories about him, as well as showing off his weapons and the injuries he had sustained in the murder hits. He removed his website after facing heat for showing off of his criminal lifestyle so proudly. Just like his website, his freedom was also short-lived. A continued criminal lifestyle put him on the law enforcement radar yet again in 2010, when a man told police that he was kidnapped and taken to Spryfield in a car. 
Armed with the weapon, the attacker then tried to get information from the victim, who escaped when the car crashed in Highfield Park. However, just hours later, the victim was caught by three attackers yet again and was badly beaten. Officers arrived on the scene and arrested Jimmy Melvin Jr. after a foot chase. He was sent to prison where he stayed until 2013. Meanwhile, Terry Maria Jr.'s murder case stayed unsolved for years, with no witnesses or evidence yet. However, all that changed in 2015, when the Crown was able to strike a deal with Derek McPhee, a career criminal who was friends with both Melvin Jr. and Mary Jr. McPhee told the court that he drove Melvin Jr. on a four-wheeler to the home where Terry Mary Jr. was sleeping. McPhee revealed that Melvin Jr. had a 357 gun, while McPhee brought a 38. When McPhee later asked Jimmy about the murder weapon, he said that he had disposed the guns and they won't find it unless they go scuba diving. McPhee also said that Jimmy Melvin Jr. had a beef with Mary Jr. and had talked about killing him for years. A childhood friend of Jimmy told a reporter that since Terry was older, he used to always pick on Jimmy and even slapped him when they were kids. According to McPhee, Melvin Jr. fired five shots killing Mary Jr. Jimmy was arrested in July 2015 and charged with the murder of Mary Jr. At the time of his arrest, police searched the vehicle Jimmy Jr. was in and found marijuana, cocaine, and many other drugs. Days after Jimmy Jr.'s arrest, Terry Mary Sr. found trouble of his own when he was arrested on new drug-related charges and given a four-year prison sentence on one count of possession for the purpose of drug trafficking. Jimmy Jr.'s trial continued and the jury found him guilty on charges of attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder in October 2017. However, he beat the first-degree murder charges for the murder of Terry Mary Jr. because the witness against him was incredible enough. It was also alleged that McPhee himself had enough motive to kill Terry Jr. and that his cooperation with the police made sense because he wanted serious charges against himself dropped. The Crown then applied to have Jimmy Melvin Jr. declared a dangerous offender because of his constantly violent lifestyle that had earned him more than 60 convictions on his criminal record since 1994. During the trial, he kept showing violent behavior inside prison, even attacking a fellow inmate who ended up in the hospital with a coma. The court accepted the Crown's plea and in January 2021, Jimmy Melvin Jr. was locked up indefinitely for the protection of the public. The Parole Board of Canada will review Jimmy Melvin Jr.'s case after 7 years and again every 2 years after that to see if his risk has decreased to a point where he can be safely released into the community on parole. Jimmy Melvin Jr. is in jail and so is his long-term rival BJ Marriott. BJ was released from a federal penitentiary in October 2018 after serving over 16 years for manslaughter, conspiracy to smuggle cocaine into the Dartmouth jail, and possession of cocaine for the purpose of trafficking. However, at the time of his release from prison, he was considered a high risk to re-offend in a violent manner, so he signed a two-year peace bond with the police, guaranteeing that he won't leave the province or get involved in any new altercations. But that wasn't the case. BJ Marriott was found in violation of the terms of the peace bond when he assaulted off-duty police officers at a strip club in Montreal. And while in prison, he was again involved in a violent offense when he charged for an attack on a fellow inmate. Terry Marriott Sr. died of natural causes in February 2020, shortly after his latest release from prison. He was in and out of prison for almost half of his life, spending more than 32 years out of his 70-year life behind bars. He had more than 30 convictions on his criminal record, including at least 14 drug-related charges. Two generations of Marius and Melvins have been involved in a drug feud that has predictably left dozens of the family members in prison or dead. With Jimmy Melvin Jr. in prison indefinitely and BJ Marius still behind bars, the feud has cooled off substantially, but the Melvin and Marius family feud will likely be remembered in Nova Scotia for decades. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Also comment down below what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and have a good one.